Good morning. This is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit. And we're continuing our series of daily morning meditations where we generally look at one or another of the lessons that are assigned for morning or evening prayer, what is known as the daily office lectionary. And Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We're continuing our celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Today is Easter Tuesday. That's what the prayer book, the 28 prayer book, calls today's lessons. Uh, and I thought we'd go ahead and, and look at a resurrection appearance uh, from John's Gospel, chapter 20, beginning at verse 11. It's assigned for uh, evening prayer tonight. But Mary stood without the sepulcher weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. And see as two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. And Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and to your father, to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. So Mary Magdalene becomes the first witness, according to John's gospel, of the resurrected Jesus Christ. And I've always found it very interesting that she doesn't recognize him at first. First, she has the angels and she thinks, well, she doesn't really realize they're angels. And so, you know, they ask her why she's crying. And she says, you know, uh, if you know, I don't, they've taken away my Lord. I don't know where he is. And then she sees Jesus, doesn't recognize him. And, and again says, thinking he must be the, the gardener, the guy in charge of the cemetery. You know, she said, look, if you moved his body, let me know and, and I'll, I'll take it away. I'm trying to imagine a one woman trying to drag away a dead body like that. I mean, it's quite incredible. But, but she just knew that it wouldn't be right for them to desecrate the body of her Lord, right? The one that she loved so much. Um, and of course, she recognizes him not in the fact that he is... Uh, physically present. I mean, I think, I think she doesn't recognize him because he's the last person in the world she expects to be seeing and speaking to her, right? You just don't expect that. But when he says her name, the love must have come through, right? Nothing, you read in these books like Dale Carnegie, where they talk about how there's nothing that somebody doesn't like to hear more than their own name, right? When you use, use the person's name in a conversation, it'll keep their attention. But when that name is said through the voice of Jesus, right, the voice of love himself, the power of recognition, boom, light bulb, Roboni, master, she recognizes him. What a wonderful moment in the story of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Here's the wonderful thing, by the way. Jesus Christ calls you by name. That Jesus Christ loves you so much that he is saying your name. And as we learn to love him, we will hear his voice more and more, clearer and clearer, and recognize that call to us as well. He is risen. He is risen from the dead. And by his grace, we have eternal life. So today we have 1215 Holy Communion and 5 o'clock evening prayer. And I do hope that you will join us.